safety for our students. Lily, uh, what are some of the things that you and your classmates have learned about the Southside community during this project? Um, different architecture and what old buildings are becoming. Okay, Grant, how about you? What have you learned with this program? I've learned with this program just so much um, of the history and what this place was years ago. Okay, and what do you think about the design and architecture of the buildings around your school? And what have you learned about the importance of preserving your community? Well, I think all the buildings just look fantastic because they're very old. And that's why I think we should keep them and preserve them. Okay, Lily, how about you? What do you think about the design and architecture of some of the buildings around you? Um, well, I think that they're very cool and the designs are something that you wouldn't see now and the importance of preserving them is that I don't think you'd see any of the things be building now that look like them. Great, great. And Stacy, give us some examples of what your students have been doing as a part of this project. Well, one of the first things they did was interviewed um, people in the community for the spoken history activity. And so they were able to actually perform oral interviews with people of the community, their family members and friends. And so that was one of the first projects that we did. And then we were able, with the, the, the big help of Louise, to set up a building tour. And students then had chosen buildings that we were able to visit. We took a building tour and visited these buildings. And they were able to research the architecture, talk to some of the people who uh, reside in the buildings or have their businesses in, in these buildings, and basically help share the findings of the history. And so from then, we've been sharing the different um, information that, this, that they, the students have found and passing it on to the rest of the students in the school. Hey, Lily, what has been your favorite part of this project? Um, I think learning about the different buildings and the scavenger hunt was fun. And also, I like going on the walking tour because you could see all the different architecture. Okay, Grant, how about you? What has been your favorite part of the Save Our History project? One is preserving our history. I thought that was very kind of them to think about our history and I did like the scavenger hunt and the other thing about the scavenger hunt that I like is running down the streets finding out things about Pittsburgh. And okay and Louise, the students have mentioned a couple things about a scavenger hunt. Walk us through the event that took place on the 30th of April along Carson Street. What was it, what was its purpose, and what did you hope to accomplish with it? The April 30th event was really quite a lot of fun. We had several hundred people come out, and the event was headquartered at the Market House right by 12th Street. Inside the Market House, we had the Saturday Light Brigade, Larry Berger, radio host, and he was there interviewing uh, anyone who wanted to come and share their Southside memories. Also, some Southside residents came and brought photographs that showed a parade in the 1950s on Carson Street or showed the old arcade theater and a movie ticket that they still had. So we um, took some photographs of some of their uh, documents, and then we're going to put that material on a website that we're creating, and I'll get to that in a minute. But another portion of the program was then at 10 o'clock, we had people from the market house leave and go out onto Carson Street and participate in a scavenger hunt. And the scavenger hunt had um, asked people generally to do two things, to identify some photographic details or then to answer some questions. And it really created a sensation on the street because people were walking along with their forms, looking up at the building, stopping to go inside some stores to see if some stores had a tin ceiling or to find a store that had an American flag and dental molding and a column inside. And so we created a lot of conversation and other people walking along the street just there shopping that day kind of were saying, hey, what's going on? So you could see some extra commotion on Carson Street. And we had Molly's trolleys there also. They were providing uh, free rides for people to help them cover the East Carson Street uh, territory. PNC Bank was a local sponsor, and then we had the History Channel help. 
Hey, and I had a chance to walk a few of the blocks with you on Saturday. Um, we stopped at some of the buildings and some of the shops and restaurants. Can you just let us know a little bit about who, um, what some of the business were that businesses were that took part? Some of the stuff that they were giving away. Oh, and, nice idea. And some of the things that were available for students to okay. do as they walked up and down the street. Well, the Comcast Cruiser was there, and the UPMC Health Van was there in the 2100 block of Carson. But then also Tom's Diner, um, and Tom's Diner is now in two stores, 1715 and 1713 East Carson Street. And one of their stores used to be a movie theater. And so they actually gave free cookies to the kids. And then the store that is Nakama, the Japanese restaurant and sushi bar, is also in a place that many Southsiders recall as an old five and dime drugstore. And up on the second floor was a bowling alley. Well, there they were giving um, snow cones away to the kids. Um, um, Esther Florals was giving free flowers to people. So we had just a lot of community cooperation. The Southside Chamber of Commerce was out in force. Um, you know, a lot of the businesses opened up their doors and were happy that we were doing the scavenger hunt. Hey, and Grant, how did you do with the scavenger hunt? Did you answer all your questions, and what did you learn from some of the questions that were asked of you on the scavenger hunt? Well, I did learn how much a Beastie Burger at Fatheads costs, <laughs> and um, I learned a lot of things about the buildings. Um, one question that I learned was, what building on Carson Street or, um, meant good lurk hard work but good return i forget what it was but we did learn that and um i learned a lot of things from it okay lily how about you what did you learn and how did you do with your scavenger hunt well i did we did pretty good we got 41 on it but some of the questions really stumped us like what place has a smoking dog in there in their building. And Stacy, what involvement did Phillips have in the event that Louise just told us about and some of the students had just mentioned? Well, Lily and some of the other students were able to volunteer to help out in the market house with the games and also with just the general cleanup and such. And just the participation of the drawings um, that will soon to be note cards that will be passed out to the kids and community. So they, they, they were able to participate quite a bit in, before for the pre-planning and also the day of the event. Okay, and what did you think of the event? Uh, Unfortunately, the I was unable to attend, which was much to my dismay, but the students told me that they were very, very pleased. They were happy to be a part of the activities, and they were excited to be there. Hey, Lily, what did you think of the event? Um, I thought it was fun, and... Very exciting, because you learned a lot from it about the South Side. Grant, how about you? What did you think? I thought it was great, because we discovered many things that I never knew, and it was very fun. Okay, um, I noticed that uh, inside the market house, there, were, there was a table with the blocks. Did anybody, did either of you guys get the chance to build the blocks, or know what the whole purpose of the blocks were? Because I'm yeah. still trying to figure that out now. I did. Um, okay. I did play a little with them in the very beginning. And why they were there is so you could build your own buildings that never were there. So that was the purpose. He's exactly <laughs> right. Everybody's a natural builder. And when we're talking about main streets, it's talking about buildings and architecture. So we want to encourage kids to build. Hey, and before we close out tonight, Louise, I wanted to uh, find out from you, what else can residents, community, and schools do to continue the effort to preserve, record, and collect vital his historical information, not only on the south side, but in other Pittsburgh communities? Be in touch with your local historical societies or local preservation groups and share the information that you have in your home. Historic photographs, memories about how things have changed over time because it is an important, it's important for 
organizations to collect and gather that information. We have a, a website that has been created based on all the student artwork that has been done and all the building information that has been collected. And you can now go on the website www.spotlightonmainstreet.com and you will be amazed at the website that you see. And there are interactive games for kids to play on the website and um, we're continuing to gather information about Southside. Just because the grant period has expired doesn't mean that we're not interested anymore because we continue our relationship with uh, Phillips Elementary School and other Southside schools. Is there anything else going on that in the near future that will be associated with this program? In June, July, August, September, we have Saturday walking tours of the South Side. So come down and join us. And you can see that um, motto that um, we were talking about before that Kurt was mentioning. And the motto is basically hard work brings sweet rewards. And you can see that beehive on a photo hut factory building that is now being renovated for apartments. It's the latest and newest renovation on Carson Street. So the old yellow photo hut building has this little symbol of a beehive and it relates to the founding of the building as the German Beneficial Union. And the whole idea was that work hard and you'll get sweet rewards. <laughs> and Stacy, where do the students in school go from here? Will this be an ongoing effort? It will absolutely be an ongoing effort. The teachers at Phillips and we hope that at Arlington, Bishop Leonard and the other schools involved will continue to promote the history and architecture of our of our area and continue to have the students do the same as they go get older. Hey, and guys, one final question for you. Uh, do you plan on continuing with doing what you can to learn about the South Side and trying to help preserve it? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Lily? How about you? Yeah. Okay, great. And thank you all of you for, for being with us and taking part in our conversation tonight. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Great. That brings us to the end of this week's show, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Focus Education. For more information or to make a comment or suggestion, please contact the Division of Communications and Marketing at 412-622-3615 or write to us at the Pittsburgh Public Schools Division of Communications and Marketing 341 South Bellafield Avenue, Pittsburgh, PA, 15213. You may also visit our website at www.pps.k12.pa.us. I would like to thank KQB for allowing us to use their airtime, to our engineer, David Scania, to Lynn Turnquist and Pat Crawford for their help and direction. And thank you to Louise Sturgis, Stacy Riggle, Grant Radicus and Lily Murar for appearing as our guests on this evening's program. In observation of the Memorial Day holiday, Focus Education will be broadcasting highlights from the recently completed All City Music Festival. We will bring you selections from the elementary, middle,